It's nice when you can support a venue and the venue can support you. The new way has been fantastic to me over the years, and I love them so much. Hey, you know what? I love it. And that's why this is the new way wrap up. And I'm Daniel Grinnell. And I'm Paul Puffatoni. Hell yeah, let's jump into it this week. You want to start with the positive or you want to start with the negatives? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah. crowd gets what the crowd wants, so we're starting <laughs> negative, people. Tell me what's new, but let's keep it clean so that our we, we, we have a lot of people that that requested that we do kind of a kind of a clean show, but let's keep it interesting and keep it rolling. Are you telling me that I have material restrictions? I'm not telling you. Material <laughs> so be courteous of the peoples. Oh yeah, uh, don't say the N word to the comic on stage. I got it. Like I learned that lesson when I was uh, two. <laughs> Yeah, right. The things that I've seen so-called comedians say right, on right. stage this week have been completely appalling for me at my standards where I'm like, it's too soon. I mean, I, I know, Pauline, you're, you're a sweet man. You're a sweet, sweet Italian man. Still take care of you. Take care of your sweet mother. Love you know, her. good Love Italian her. man Paul Love is. Her. But uh, we differ. I mean, it is too soon sometimes, but then again, you have, a, like, tonight, I died laughing at one of those jokes that you're referring to uh, in the Oxford vein. Um, <laughs> that was so hilarious! That was a good one earlier. Like, I've heard a lot of awful ones that should never have been spoken, but that one was out of the park. Because it was different perspective. Um, oh, well, oh, because he was a school teacher. And he was a teacher telling the joke. So, I mean, he had some the joke And now he would react in that situation. Yeah, yeah. but um, there's leeway. Other things that I've heard, I heard something that almost appalled me that was said on stage. And I didn't know that was possible. But I wouldn't say appalled because I'm like, eh. You seem like a pretty hard guy I'm to pretty, offend. So. I'm just like, I, I, I could see me being offended, but this guy. Go ahead. Let's just. All right, so let's there's, let's put it this way. How bad could a charity show be? Let's put it that way. Like, what's the worst that could happen at a charity show, Paul? If, it, if I had to ask you, you know, before your experience is Saturday, what is the worst that you think? It's a pretty safe show usually, correct? Got a lot of drama? I mean, it should be. It's Everybody, for charity. Uh, no, the, the worst thing that could happen is a charity show is that uh, you rent a venue uh, and nobody shows up. <laughs> right. Well, you're, you're okay. tickets. I mean, I guess that's one way that's to do it. That's the worst thing that could happen. That's fair. That, yeah, $5 a plate and you didn't sell any plates. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty terrible. But uh, somebody had a charity show over the week. Let's just call them uh, Finger Cranium Productions. At his show. I think I've heard of Finger Cranium. Finger Cranium, yeah, we've discussed them on the pod before. Yeah, Finger Cranium, not real popular in the area. They provide people opportunities. You know, they provide people opportunities. And speaking of providing people opportunities, when you're running a charity show, you should really be sure of who you're booking, right? You should know that a hundred percent. Know who sure. you're booking. Know who you're booking. Yes. Not every comedian is equal. No, no. And for a charity show where you need things to go very smoothly and nice and nobody to leave with a negative taste in their mouth, bad taste, negative taste, is there a taste as a negative? Nope, bad taste um, in their mouth. You Wait, you don't so, want that. You hey, don't want that. Is this recent or is this new? Oh, this was pretty recent. We do, this is the way weekly wrap up. So if it didn't happen last week, we're not talking about it. Because right? I was just in a. Cranium production. Oh yeah, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard. I've heard from many people about I, this. I was there to like 1:30 in the morning and like. Yeah. Let's just go in the beginning of it before you got there. I got the scoop. Okay. So uh, comic goes on stage. Very nice. You know, he does his thing. He's hosting. He's bobbing. He's weaving. He's doing good. You know, the room kind of dies away. He brings it back. No, the host. Good host. Good, good host. host. Good host. Brings the room back. Sets up the next comic. Perfect. This next comic that goes up, he will not, or she will not, be named. Okay. They will not be named. There we go, 2021. Yeah. All right, progressive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you kept it so gender neutral, I don't know who you're talking about. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we decided to go on stage, and they're a newer comic, you know, so, you know, things happen. Well, let's just, the charity was for uh, a kid that has a terminally ill disease, right? Oh, uh, yeah. 
And that's who the money's being raised for specifically. So he decides to open up with shitting on him, you know, the five-year-old kid, pretty bad. And then being like, where's he at? And when they said he's not here because he's five, you know, this is a bar, you know? He said, oh, what, did he die from his disease? That happened in a charity show. Yeah, so he decided to go that route and then follow it up with his brand new, never been tested Oxford shooting joke. <laughs> and it's and it and no it way. terminally hey. ill benefit for a fucking toddler. <laughs> it has no idea why his set went poorly. No idea. Bad crowd, I guess. You know, it's all. Only the crowd. Yeah, Sometimes when someone's brand new, they think they're Bill Burr, and they're like, "Well, what is it like?" You know, hey, you're not. Just crowds are stupid. I mean, <laughs> it's all their fault. I just don't. Sometimes it's the comedians. Sometimes I've, just, I've got some ridiculous shit up here when I'm speaking to a microphone yeah. on stages, but I've never once been like, "Hey, let's talk about the dead kid we're raising money for." And then, by the way, this didn't go well, so they're probably definitely primed for this mass shooting joke from that, you know, terrible shooting that happened six days ago. I am, <laughs> I am sure, I, I am sure... 30 that, miles away. I am sure that at multiple bad comedy shows around America, people were making jokes too, but it was very close to home. So that was the big yeah. news, that was the big news... That was how we started. That's how they started the charity show. Okay? Okay. Mind I, you. I was there when I heard about that, but okay. Yes. Now, Paul, why don't you take us up until the apex? Or if you want me to, I'll go that way. Whoever you want to tell the story from So, I was there, and that was the big news of what that comedian did and how offensive his material was and how people had to produce, produce, or, uh, walk up to the producer of the show to complain how offensive it was. The producer of the show addressed the offensiveness of the act, uh, and then the other. How, how did he address the offensiveness of the act? Do you want me to take over from here? Yeah. So, did this, you, did this producer, known for being a belligerent drunken asshole, get belligerently drunken an asshole and then get on stage and, and bring up something that happened hours ago and then start berating the crowd himself? So obviously you've been talking to people. You've been talking to people. So I feel like I mean, how many fat bitches can you throw out at a charity show? Come on. Why they gotta be fat bitches? Can they be skinny bitches? You know, in that's... my opinion, most bitches are usually skinny. Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> So hey, so so this is like where, where where you're crossing waves where that's something that that guy No, he was not near creative enough to even think about anything like that. Yeah. But Which uh, is basic, it's basic. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, so uh so, so yeah, yeah, so I don't drink, I don't drink, uh and people were thank you. Yeah, Paul. Thank yeah, you, Paul. Thank you. Sobriety is Fantastic. How many DUIs we got? Uh, uh, one from the year 2000. <laughs> one from the year 2000. That was enough. <laughs> hey, the only, the only thing that sucks about sobriety is going on a date because the whole ritual is centered around drinking. So it's like, hey, bitch, you want to go out for coffee? Yeah. Drinking <laughs> no. from this yeah. Cock. yeah. Oh, so, uh, anyways. Sobriety is cool. People were doing shots and drinks, and uh, yeah, as you do at a bar, nothing wrong with that. Yep, except if you have a drinking problem. But if you're, <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're exactly. running the show and you decide to rock a mic, it's usually best not to do that when you're hammered. And from what I heard, he showed up hammered. So. <laughs> oh really? Okay. He showed up with a butt. Yeah. So. <laughs> I left at 1.30 in the morning. Uh-huh. As yeah, the latest I've gotten in the people I've talked to that this happened with is 1.30 in the morning. Okay, so yeah, I was the last comedian well, that was. Mind you, mind you, it's so never, what happened? It's yeah, it's never a good sign when this particular producer decides to hang out after one of his shows. What? What happened? Especially when he's been drinking. Um he's he's uh what it, it, the complete opposite of undefeated. He's very defeated. 
<laughs> he's over defeated. Did he get into a fight? He got into another fight. No. And lost again. No. That's four in a year at his own venues and shows that he's been beaten up at. Wow. Is this is this factual? Has this been confirmed? Confirmed. Because I wasn't there. I don't I've know. heard two black eyes and possible fractured ribs. So he got fucked up. A uh, finger cranium productions. Thanks. Going oh no no you're 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 not you're not ever never gonna find it online. It's a fake name. Yeah, it's a fictional. We don't throw out names here on the pod. Yeah, yeah we keep it classy. We keep it classy. Okay, we'll wait till after. Yeah, we keep it classy. Okay, twenty minutes. We'll give it so. <laughs> So it was confirmed that's true. It's all true, and honestly, it fits the bill, so not surprising. You know what I mean? Wow. That's so at a charity show, something had already gone wrong previously in the show. The whole show went wrong. Off essentially. The producer of the show. And the producer ruins it the most by, by getting beat up by the bouncer. By the bouncer? That makes it worse to me. It's not like you got in a drunken brawl with somebody. Hey, what night was that? Yeah, a what finger night? cranium for the night. It was Saturday night, I hear, or maybe Friday night, or maybe Thursday night. Whatever night you think out of those is best to have a charity show on, it was. We have the Planet Ant and Down River Hold on, hold on, we're not jumping sharks here. This is our investigative team. He wasn't at Planet Ant. He wishes he could get booked at Planet Ant. <laughs> <laughs> he would come in his pants. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, just all around bad. But honestly, he's a piece of shit. So it doesn't matter. Um, let's do some of the positive now to end the show real quick here. Positive. Let's do the positives here. Lovely, lovely this Wednesday, December 8th. Uh, Hip Prob with Tam White and Jacob Russell will be going out at Planet Ants. A lot of fun comics if you're listening. Go Check on it down out. there, try to get on the stage, do some improv, work on your riffing a little bit. It's good time. Uh, Tam's cool as shit. Jake's always fun. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you're not going to go wrong there. They're going to treat you right. Two superstars. Uh, do really good stuff. Uh, and then tomorrow is also, let's finish on this right here, Pauly. Uh, tomorrow is round two of the semifinals of Detroit to LA. Yep. Um, so, we got a lot of friends on this lineup. We do. We, got oh, quite a few. we also have the two best nights of the night. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's go to Paulie's picks. Okay, uh, Paulie's picks, two best nights of the night. Uh, first one goes to Ronnie Rohrbeck. Ronnie Rohrbeck. Huh? Ronnie Rohrbeck and his new material uh, uh, brought the room together and used his disability like a sledgehammer. <laughs> He Which was is the, ironic because his disability stops him from using a sledgehammer. Yeah, it, yeah, it, <laughs> boom! That's something that he would have addressed. Uh, he just used it like slide, slide, and he had the crowd going. So uh, that was great because he added so much new material. So he had the whole good crowd question. going. He said he was bringing some new stuff. I'm glad it all went good. Yeah, and then uh, the second best set of the night, uh, Toy Toy, her first time. Here oh, in the late room. night, yeah, the late night part. Yeah, le- late night, final queen of the night came on and crushed it here at the new way. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Diego Antonazzi for my favorite set of the night. From what I've seen, I've never seen Diego tell such an edgy joke in my life. I mean, I've seen him tell edgy jokes, but I've been on actual shows with him. Uh, I like, love Diego. Love Diego. He's <laughs> one of the funniest comics in Michigan. He's yeah. always hilarious. That's that's a big compliment. I've known Diego I, for for a long time. I really enjoy Diego's comedy. You can get off his oh. dick now. I'm, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Hey, hey, Paul's a brought Josh hey. Adams up in 20 minutes, so... <laughs> uh, but yeah, but speaking of Ronnie Rohrbeck... Um, he's in Detroit to LA He's in Detroit to LA tomorrow, so if you're looking for something to do and you're watching this pod and you're at work not doing your stuff, you know, go on down to Ridley's, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle tomorrow. Watch Detroit Deli. Ronnie Rohrbeck's in there. I'm honestly, I'm just going to go through the lineup real fast, then we'll discuss it, all right? All right. We got Ronnie Rohrbeck, Ryan Brown, John McDonald, Robert Schneider, Ja'Cory Hawkins, Cody Calebra, Tam White, as we mentioned earlier, Justin Pettick, Ella Hordell, Jessica Brown, and Emily Rose Miller. All right? So pretty strong lineup tomorrow. At so I, I kind of picked... Four in that that I'd roll with, that still leaves an open spot. Okay. Last time that we took picks, 
Uh, the five I picked, I think I only got two right. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, <laughs> we were betting on it, we lost the odds. We were way off, so uh, we're going to give you some more of our predictions that are going to be completely wrong. Hey, is anyone who's in the audience never trust what a comedian thinks is funny? <laughs> That's true, because you're going you're gonna to not win. <laughs> but then again... Uh, but no, I mean, honestly, the two people I really think are getting through, because um, I've done a, been working with them a lot lately, so I mean, I'm probably biased with that. Yeah, so, but it's like they're killing everything I'm with them on, you know so, what I mean? They're in such a good zone, I can't sit. Like, Ryan Brown has been on a tear for a year straight. Oh, yeah. He's been knocking out one night stand hostings, he's been featuring, he's been traveling. Dude, Ryan Brown is bringing the heat, and he's funnier and funnier every time I see him. He's it. even been traveling Spirit Airlines. Yeah. I mean, of course, and he's actually got a good uh, uh, Spirit Airlines show that I haven't heard every time I heard a comic talk. Good callback. But <laughs> uh, Ronnie Rohrbeck is my other guy, though. I mean, Ronnie's the same thing. Like, he's just been working really hard. He really just seems to be hitting a nice little stride right now. And I think his, his five minutes he's got ready for tomorrow is going to blow it up. It's going to be great. Yeah, I think uh, Ronnie's definitely going to blow it up. Uh, Tam White in that mix. Mm -hmm. I've seen well. Tam White go from stand-up, doing improv, to mixing music and improv, improv and comedy together in, in hip-prov. And just be amazing every time so like to me it's like that's sh that should be a, a shoe in that's my first round pick going in okay, next so time. you think tam white's going through no matter what yep all right that seems like a good pick who else do you think on here paul here's one hmm? uh, uh there was only four other ones that I there's only four other ones that you didn't mention on the box <laughs> uh, so <laughs> So I guess. <laughs> but no uh, we should probably only pick uh, pick one more pick one more so we just did two well, Ryan's my boy, so I we should... We got Ryan Brown, too. So, Oh, shit, Ryan, yeah. We just okay. talked about Ryan Brown. <laughs> For like three minutes. Sometimes my ADD kicks in. I'm like, oh, we did just talk about that. I think that. your OLD is kicking in. Yeah, so uh, Tam White, Ryan Brown, Ronnie Warbuck, uh, that's my three. Robert Schneider came all the way back in town from Washington, D.C. Yeah. Uh, not that you deserve a spot because of that, but... If you came in for that, you better you better it win it. Tells me things aren't going great in DC. That's what <laughs> I'm just saying. You flew halfway across the country for a free show. DC is like an hour and a half. By plane. That's correct. <laughs> it's a good opportunity. You got your good friend Nick Pizzuti picks you up in the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, there's no sirens or police cars that drive by. He goes into a seizure. <laughs> All right. But no, I mean, Rob's a club favorite there. He does very well at Ridley. So, I mean, he has a, I think he has a strong shot to get through. If oh, yeah, he's, he's a good job getting his side. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's going to be people on there that, you know. Because, what is it, two judge votes, three crowds? I have two and two, I think. Two and two? Well, five get through, right? I think it's four every time. Two get through every, like, week, and then it's four. No, 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 two in the first round, and then it's five in the second semifinals. Five yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's it was happy two and three either way. I was about to say that. I was like, well, obviously it's the only fucking. Let's do it four one. I'll tell you, what, it's it's a math that I don't gotta worry about. Right. There you go. Right. I know, Pauly. Basic addition, buddy. <laughs> 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 it's kind of I do math like Rocky Balboa. <laughs> yeah. That's why it takes him so hard. It's so hard for me to go in order on the list. Uh, <laughs> no, because I'm hot. Unless you owe me money, then Paul's really good, but the numbers give him money. Never seen any kind of interest in his head like that before. But all right, that's been our show. It's the Newly Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm Daniel Grinnell again. I'm Paul Papazzoni. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you. Good night.